Yo, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be replacing the old, worn out, cracked, just beat dashboard in our 01 Dodge Ram here. This video should be good for any 98 to 02 Ram for the dashboard replacement. This truck is a manual, but for the automatic trucks, it's very similar process. Anyway, let's get started. We're going to be messing with the airbags in there. So the first thing to do is come under the hood and disconnect your battery. Take off the negative first. And for you diesel boys, make sure you disconnect both of them. First thing we're going to do inside is remove the instrument bezel. That just is clipped in and it'll pop out. Probably break too. I also got a new one of these. Next, we'll take out the radio, two 10 millimeter bolts. Then we have the antenna plug and two electrical connections. And the radio come out. Next, we'll take off the climate control panel. It's just four Phillips screws. Now for the climate control, there's three electrical connections on the back. The connections are just the push button kind. The vacuum plug has these two 10 millimeter, I guess, bolts that got to come out. Oh, that's a nut. Then I'm going to screw them nuts back on there because I will lose them. Now it's pretty important to take note how this harness is routed and I got them labeled radio and climate. So I'm going to be using my video for reference, but do what you got to do. With that out of the way, we can come to the lower half of the dash here. First, we're gonna take off this panel underneath the steering wheel. You got three Phillips screws on the bottom. Oh, that one's missing. Next, we're gonna loosen the first couple screws here on the door sill. That way we can pull off the kick panel here. They're a little dirty, but there's a screw in there somewhere. Now we can kind of lift up on the sill plate and pull the kick panel out. Ooh, is that a wheat penny? Yep. Now drop the hood release bracket. Two screws under there. That's out of the way. Now we're going to take out this metal brace. We have, what, five screws on that. Oh, nope, there's six. There's one right there. Oh, no, there's seven. Seven, final answer. And we'll get this wire off of there. Now behind the pedals here, we've got two harnesses to undo. The one back here. Push the white button in. That'll make that black piece flip down and then you just push on that. And the plug pops out. This one, there's a 10 millimeter bolt in the center. Once that bolt is loose, it won't drop out. It'll just stay in there. And you unplug that. And then there's one more plug right here beside it. That's just the push button style. Now we'll come under the steering column. There's two bolts holding it up, one on each side. Oh, two nuts, two nuts. Now, normally this would rest on your seat, but I took mine out so I could get you guys them angles. So I just got a jack stand there. Now we're going to start taking apart uh, the plastic on the steering wheel. That way we can get that wiring harness off because all of that comes out with the dash. So this tilt lever just threads out. There's three T20 Torx screws holding the plastic pieces together. There's one in the middle and then one on each side. Oh shit, I'm falling. The light. Now we can separate them carefully because this stuff is cheap obviously come on now that wasn't very careful didn't break though and then for the second plastic piece there's one t20 in the middle here and then looks like just one on the side now we can start pulling off some of that wiring starting here i don't think you have to take off this black cover but i'm gonna do it just so i can show you guys yeah i don't think you have to take it off because there's a hole at the back of it so you can get to that bolt which is an eight millimeter. Then once that bolt is out, you can just wiggle that plug right out. One on the left side bottom here, there's just a tab, Get that one off. And then to the right of the one we just took out, we have this one. It just has two of these tabs, top and bottom. And then this wire just runs to that yellow plug that we uh, popped off of that metal bracket right here. So we'll unplug that. So I guess just unplug that as soon as you take it off of the bracket. And then one final gray plug right here by the ignition. That should be it. So this gray wire with the yellow plug is gonna just stay with the steering wheel. And then these are gonna come out with the dash. There's a bracket holding it onto the shaft right here. It just kind of clips and pops in. Now we need to get this console out of the way. There's an airbag module behind it. Pull out the little grippy things in the cup holder. That'll expose two eight millimeter bolts we gotta take out. 
Now I'm trying to do this in somewhat of an organized manner. I know there's a lot going on. That's why I kind of went top to bottom, left to right. And if I missed anything, I'll let you know when I come across it. Now that the console is out of the way, there's four bolts, or there's two nuts and two bolts, one on each side that hold this bracket on. And that'll give us access to that airbag module. And these are all 10 millimeter, by the way. Looks like there's a wire clipped on on the driver's side. Take that bracket out. And then there's four bolts holding the module itself into place, two on each side. And remove. I don't even know why that needs to come out. Why can't you just unplug it? I don't know. Now we'll get the glove box out, open it up, and then push on the back, and that'll kind of suck the pins into the side. And it just pulls right out. Now we're gonna take out the airbag. You don't have to. It'll come out with the dash, but you're gonna have to take it off eventually anyway. So there's two screws on the front of this trim piece and then one on the bottom. Glove box latch. To get the airbag out, there's two screws on each side and then three 10 millimeter bolts. And we got two more 10 millimeters underneath. Now we should be able to take this out. There's a plug on the back. We'll just unplug that and then it'll come out. Now we can loosen up the sill plate and take off the kick panel like we did on the other side. So taking off the kick panel on each side exposes the lower dash mounting bolt. And you can see it's uh, it's slotted at the bottom. So you only, you only have to loosen these. You don't need to remove them. And they are half inch. Now we can come to the top of the dash and start removing the eight millimeter screws along the windshield. Now, with all those out, we should be able to rock the dash backwards like that. All right, guys, here's the fun part. Once you have your dash tilted back, there's the fuse box here. And behind it, I think there are three harnesses, the one with the purple, the one with the pink and red, and then the green and blue. And we got to somehow get back there and un unclip them. I got them. What I ended up doing was laying on my back uh, on the floor, looking up in, using a screwdriver a long one, a flathead, to pry, because these are the push button style, so that's good. So I was just using the flathead to push on the button and then pop them out. A little bit of a pain, but definitely doable. Oh, also while I was under there, the parking brake release lever needs to get, it's like a metal bar, and that just needs to get popped out. So we should be good to remove the dash now. All right, let's see if I can get this thing out by my lonesome. Might have to call in backup. <laughs> This is not fun. Oh, found some stuff that needs unplugged. I'll show you what I unplugged then. All right, I zip tied those out of the way. I think they were catching. What are we breaking? Dash is out. Let me show you a couple of things before I get it all the way out. Here's that parking brake release uh, lever I was talking about. That comes out of that. And then there's two plugs on that side that I couldn't really even see until I pulled the dash back, the orange and the white plug in right there. Easy enough. I don't even know. You probably could have seen them from the bottom, but yeah, there they are. In addition to that, the vacuum connection that we took off of the climate control plugs in to the firewall right there. That'll also need to get disconnected. But now the dash is completely out. We'll get it out uh, in front of the truck here and we'll put on the new dash pad. Got the dashboard up on the sawhorses here. Just for reference, this is the windshield side and then passenger side. So if you look underneath, this is why we take the whole dash board out. There's screws facing this way for the bracket. And then each duct has two screws on either side. So we're going to start taking those out. So we slid down right here to the middle. As you can see, this is like where the dashboard broke pretty bad. So I'm just going to hold it. Now we're looking at the driver's side. And that's all we really have to do for the back side. And then each side has one screw right here in the corner. Now looking at the front driver's side here, there's quite a few screws holding on the front. So we'll just start hammering down on those. 
Then same thing on the passenger side. And doing that should allow us to take off the remainder of the pieces. Now this defrost duct has a screw in the back here, kind of hidden. And that's it. Now I'm going to vacuum it up, clean it up pretty good. All right, let's get our new dash pad on there and check the fitment. Looks pretty good. The fitment is perfect, so I'm going to start screwing it back in. This dash came from LMC Truck. The fitment is perfect and the color is right on, so I'm really happy with it. Let's get this thing back in the truck. All right, let's see how we do getting this thing back in. Yikes. Ready? Hey, see if I can tilt this wheel. Oh yeah, that ought to help. Nice and easy, nice and easy. Please don't break. I can't see. This is difficult. There we go, that one's in. Easy. Plugging in the vacuum line now. Cutting my temporary zip tie. Get these wires back down where they belong. All right, now I'm plugging in the annoyingly hard to get to ones that were on the fuse panel. Now I think I'm good to rock this thing front. Yep, popping off the A-pillar trim on both sides because the fitment is pretty snug. Got the dash flipped up into place, as you can see. I um, put the two nuts back on the steering column to hold it up. Right now I'm installing the five bolts that go along the windshield. Right now I'm tightening the corner dash mount bolt. I'm gonna do that to both sides. Now that the dash is completely tight, I'm gonna let the steering column back down so we can feed the wiring. All right, so it's actually the next day. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the dash, get everything plugged back in. Everything is gonna hook up and plug in the same way we took it out. So I'm not gonna film any of that, try and keep the video short. Just make sure before you tilt your dash forward and bolt it to plug in those things that I showed you, like the fuse box and the vacuum line, because you do not wanna have to tilt your dash back because you forgot to plug something in. I think I got everything. So I'm gonna get working on that. If I come across anything, I'll let you know. If not, I'll see you when it's done. As you can see, I have the install finished up here. Everything is done now. Nothing gave me a hard time going back in, which is good. In black here, you'll see I also got a new instrument bezel cover to go along with the new dash. They're made of a lot better quality than the OEM, so they should last a lot longer and take a lot to break. Dang it. That's pretty much going to wrap it up for this one, guys. Now, before someone says it, let me beat you to it. Yes, your heater core is very accessible while your dash is out. Should you replace it? I don't know. That's up to you. I did not replace mine, but hey, guy, my heat works okay. So do what you got to do. But that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped. I'll put LMC part numbers in the description. If you like the video, consider subscribing. Take it easy. See you in the next one.